Let's talk about the various products and the product overview of the e-commerce environment. So in this particular section, we're going to first of all discuss the e-commerce environment about mid-1990. Exactly what did the e-commerce world look like at this particular time? At this particular point in time, all we really had to work with were just static content HTML documents. So we had simple HTML documents that basically contained links to other types of HTML documents, but they were very static oriented. We couldn't put any dynamic type information inside of here. Along the latter part of the 90s became the evolution of the Java-based language. And here, for the very first time, we could actually insert some dynamic information into our static content HTML documents. So using the concept of Java applets, we can actually insert information into our documents that was basically dynamically generated. So now we had the capability to basically combine both static and dynamic content information. Both of these particular pieces were going to be contained on the web server. The role of the web server was basically going to be the source point for all of our static content HTML documents and all of our Java applets. Now, the, the web server basically came in a variety of different types of vendor-based implementations. Apache, IBM had their own implementation. Obviously, there's the implementation from Microsoft. The role of the browser now was to actually access these particular web service components. So the browser now was where our customers were actually going to gain these HTML documents and access them, and they're going to call upon the web server to basically ask for these particular types of HTML documents and these types of applets. Now the web server was going to be sitting behind the ISP, the Internet Service Provider. So the client browser, Netscape or Internet Explorer, was basically going to be passing messages to the ISP, and the ISP is basically the front end of the Internet backbone. The Internet backbone is basically a whole series of servers working together to source up HTML types of documents. So our messages to the ISP were going to be converted into different types of message packets. And these message packets are then going to be sent to the appropriate web server that actually contain the HTML documents that we happen to be looking for. So in this particular point in time, the mid-1990s, as far as the e-commerce environment was concerned, we basically had static content HTML type documents, and we had the ability to insert dynamic information using Java applets. Let's look at the evolution of the e-commerce world. So we've been talking about the role of the web server. So initially, in the mid part of the 90s, we had this concept of the web server. And we used the web server basically to contain all of our static content HTML documents and all of our Java applets. So we had the web server was the initial type of initial type of server that we had to work with in the e-commerce environment. Now the latter part of the 90s saw the evolution and the implementation of a brand new type of a server known as the application server. The application server gave us capabilities that the web server could never possibly possess. With the application server now we had the ability to develop different types of server side components things that would actually run on the application server and generate content back to the web browser. We basically had two different implementations at this particular point in time. We had Microsoft's implementation of their business logic components, and then we have the Sun variation and their Java-based language. So each of these particular pieces utilized their inherent programming aspects along with some enterprise processing to link the Java-based and the .NET components to some of our legacy system applications that have been running in the background, like client-server applications, or maybe even some mainframe components. 